Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and welcome to the 31st video in a series of game development tutorials on how to make your own Resident Evil style game in Unity. In this tutorial we're covering a main menu setup and a splash screen. Remember to subscribe and click the notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial I upload. Feel free to leave a comment and drop a like. I also have a Patreon page where you can help be a part of this channel and you'll also find all the scripts and the assets to this series there too along with plenty of other things. You can also now join as a free member. Now on with the tutorial. So I think that it's kind of important to learn the things we're going to learn over the next few tutorials and they're vital pieces that we need to finish the rest of the game. So it's always good in a development cycle to take time away from just focusing on one part, bring your mind away to another part to learn some new things and go back to your original part. So putting that into perspective, create a part of the game, create some UI elements, some different scenes, come back to the game and apply logic. So the idea of what we'll do is create a scene which will have a splash screen on it and it will bring us into our main menu. Now there are many ways you can do this. You can have a separate splash screen scene and then you can have a separate main menu screen, a uh, scene I should say, apologies. Uh, but we're going to mingle both into one single scene. Now the way I currently have this set up and if you've been following this series exactly the way I've been doing it, you'll have it set up the same way as well. But in, if we go to our build settings and into our scenes, we can see that actually scene zero is still that sample scene. And that sample scene has nothing. So this area zero, zero 01, uh, scene one, door transition scene two, area two is scene three. Those three we have set up. And what we can do here is we can use this to our advantage. And we're not going to necessarily use sample scene, although you can. Uh, we're going to end up replacing sample scene with this uh, main menu and uh, splash screen. So what we'll do is we'll close that down into Unity and create a new scene. So file, new scene. And we'll have it basic built in or URP if you are in Unity 6. And we'll basically make this the entirety of the splash screen to start with and then into the main menu. So let's start by going to game object. Let's go to uh, UI and let's go to raw image. We'll call this black back, uh, not back back, black back. I typed L. There we go. And we will set the anchoring to cover the entire screen. So we'll set it as zero, zero, zero. We'll make sure it is stretched. And we'll set the color to black. Uh, let's go to the canvas and set our canvas correctly, which is the UI scale mode. And it needs to be scaled with screen size 1920 by 1080 and the match needs to be 0 0.5. So at this point, what we'll end up doing is bringing some more detail to this scene for now, but what we kind of want to bring together is just a simple main menu function. So I'm gonna double click the canvas to bring it into scene view. I'm going to go to the textures folder and I'm going to import my simple logo. And you can use your own logo, you know, you can do whatever you want, it could be an image, whatever it's all good and the idea is i'm going to use this and use some animations to kind of fade in fade out and then bring into the main menu and what that will require is a little bit of animation so let's start by going to game object ui and raw image i'm going to have this centered i'm going to have this as jv logo obviously your logo would be your image so drag and drop image onto there and then I am going to increase the size of this. So let's go to the rec tool. Let's drag and drop and let's pan ourselves to the other side of the canvas. So it looks a little bit more normal. Uh, keep it centered and let's have it about there. How's that looking game view? Yeah, that should do the trick. So next thing to do is set the alpha as zero. And then let's create the animation for this. So animations folder. And let's go to UI and make sure we are on UI right there. And let's make sure uh, we go to the animation tab and let's click on create. I'm going to have this as JV fade in and then I'll press record. So the idea of what we'll do is I want this to kind of fade in to white and then change to like a blood red color and then fade out. So we'll set the first keyframe. The color is all the way to zero on the alpha. And the color is also completely white. Next, let's go to keyframe 60. Uh, let's set this to 
255 on the alpha. And then let's go to frame 180 and we'll have a blood red kind of color. And then frame 240 and we'll set the alpha back to 255. And then let's stop that recording, head to project. Let's go to the animation and make sure we only play once. And let's have a quick look how that appears in our game. It should look somewhat cool. Cool, there we go. I like how that looks. So next thing we need to do is let's apply the fade out animation to the black back. And the idea of what we'll end up doing is playing an animation because we're going to use a sequence of events. Uh, so let's drag and drop this fade out animation onto black back. And then let's double click black back down here. And what this will do is it will open our animator tab. And what we need to do is right click, create state and create empty. And then this new state, right click and then set as default state. And what that means is that we're not going to play this animation until we tell it to via the C-sharp code. So at this point, let's start the script to get our sequence of events into place. So let's go to our scripts folder. Uh, let's go to the UI folder and let's right click, create uh, a new script. And let's call this main menu uh, function. And the idea, like I say, it's going to be all based on a sequence of events, which means we're going to have to use a coroutine. And a coroutine is going to be able to time things perfectly for us. So we know that our animation of our logo lasts um, four seconds in total, 240 frames. So we can base it on that at least to start with. So let's go down here below the update method. And let's say I enumerator. And we'll call this um, splash to menu, open close bracket, open curly bracket. And the first thing we'll do is we will say yield, return, new, wait for seconds, because we obviously have to wait for the logo to kind of fade out. So we'll say four, close bracket, semicolon. And at this point, we now know that this coroutine is going to run perfectly for us because it's not underlined in red. So let's start declaring some variables. Let's start with the uh, actual logo. So we will serialize field in square brackets. We will say game object and we'll call it um, game logo, semicolon. Next, what we'll do, serialize field again game object and we'll call this fade um, actually no now I think about it it's fade in we need isn't it so we'll call it fade in and what we'll do is we will change what we've actually put in unity because I think we actually yeah fade out it should be fade in I'm thinking of actually fading out going into a game so we do need to Make sure we have the fade in animation, but that doesn't matter. We can still use fade out. Uh, so let's drag fade in as well. And we can use this black back to our advantage because this now has fade in and fade out and we can control one or the other. So let's make sure we do have fade out and fade in onto there. Let's head back to here. And now we can say after the yield return you wait for seconds, we can say game logo dot set active is false. And then fade in dot get component and in spiky brackets animator open close bracket dot play and in brackets and quotes the name of our animation which is indeed fade in with no space so fade in semicolon now obviously because the coroutine won't run without being told to run we have to go to our start method and say start coroutine and in brackets the name of that coroutine which is splash to menu open close bracket close bracket once again semicolon and save so i'm going to quickly try out this now and what should happen is that we should be able to see this run as a nice sequence so let's go back to unity into scene view let's go to game object create empty and we'll put main menu 
Control. And then we will drag and drop the script we've just written, which is in the UI folder, and drag and drop onto main menu control. And let's just declare those two variables. So black back, right there, and JV logo, right there. So if I put them in the right place, that is. And let's now press play and see the sequence of events work. So what should happen is that it should do this, fade out, and then our black screen will fade into this. And you could imagine this now being our main menu. So that's where we will put this into play. So what we'll do is we will add some buttons that will appear behind the black back. So let's go to game object. Let's go to UI and let's go to button, uh, which is right there. Uh, let's import the TMP essentials because we will need those. Excellent. And now what we'll do is we will place this button behind black back and I'm going to turn off black back because it's not important to have it on at the moment. We need to focus on our main menu. So how do we make this main menu really be a main menu? Well, we can play around with the buttons and we've played around with buttons before, so I'm not gonna go into too much detail, but we'll get a quick view of this setup. So we'll have this as start new game. And I'm going to change the size of the button because it's a little bit small. So start new game. Let's have it over here and let's have the color as alpha zero, because I want it to be a kind of a see-through button, uh, but I do want the text to be white. So we'll go to the text, we'll make it bold. Uh, let's make it a little bit bigger. Let's have that as maybe no, 40 is too big. We'll have 36 and we'll change it to white. Uh, back onto the button and we can change the normal color to be uh, zero on the alpha. Uh, let's have highlighted color as like a blood red kind of color. Pressed color, we'll have a crimson kind of red color. Uh, selected color, we will have zero on the alpha. So if I press play now and go over the button and press it, ah, of course, I forgot to do the back black. So if we go on this now, we should be able to see that if we set the alpha back to 255, there we go. So we just need to set that alpha back to 255 on the image on the button and that will work as intended. So let me turn black back on, onto there and let's see this play out a little bit better than it just has done. So there is our logo, fade out into the menu and there is start new game, which doesn't want to work because we've not turned black back off. So that now means that we might need to modify our script. You can see I've turned the black back off and we're able to kind of work with the button. So that means that we need to go down here and here in the script where we have splash to menu, we need to yield return new, wait for seconds and we'll say two and then we'll say fade in dot set active and in brackets false with a semicolon. Uh, while I'm here, I'm going to get rid of the annotations because they are not required. And I'm going to save that script. And the great thing is because we quick have that button quickly set up now, and you should probably take a bit more time setting up these buttons, um, but you can use them really quick and easily. You can duplicate them and change them. So before we go any further though, let's change this to play new. Let's turn the black back off once again. Uh, let's hold control, press D. Let's bring it down to about there. And let's change this text to say load game. And we'll say the button is called load game as well. Finally, hold control, press D. And we've got our three fundamental buttons that we will need. And we'll call this one quit game. And obviously the text is then going to say quit game. Next thing we need to do is save this scene. So hold control, press S to save or go to file and save. And then let's make sure we save it in our scenes folder. And we're just gonna call this main menu and save. At this point, we need to make sure that our scene is set up correctly in the build settings. 
So head to there and then add open scenes and then drag main menu to the very top. And if you've got sample scene, hopefully you should, press delete on it to remove it. You need to essentially make sure at this point that area 001 is still scene one, door transition is still scene two, and area two is still scene three. So this has to be the ordering. This is very important whenever we build the game into an executable. So for now, we at least have our main menu starting to come together. So next tutorial, what we'll do is we will create a more advanced version of this menu. We'll add a background, our camera, we'll add some effects, and we'll make our buttons actually start doing something useful. Uh, so remember to subscribe and click the notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial I upload, and I'll see you next time.